Hey everyone, welcome to episode 259 of the All Dolphins podcast, where you can plainly see that Omar and I today are joined by a good friend, Tim Graham, writes for The Athletic, out in Buffalo, covers the Bills, and we figured who else should we bring along for another in installment of a Around the AFC's look in this offseason. It's not like the Bills haven't been in the news this week. Uh, I guess the first obvious question Tim, your reaction to the news of the Bills trading Stephon Diggs to the Houston Texans? My reaction is that it had to happen. Um, was it going to happen? Well, now I'm starting to quibble with myself. If it didn't have to happen, then maybe it didn't need to. Uh, all right, so we can get into semantics. Um, but I think a lot of people had come to the conclusion that because of Stefan Diggs's contract and with the salary cap implications that the bills were going to have to keep him. Um, they talked this off season about Von Miller being a great teammate for restructuring his contract. Josh Allen restructured his contract. You never heard anything about Stefan Diggs restructuring his contract and he was due $18.5 million this season would have been the highest paid uh, bill and then his salary cap number somewhere around or his dead cap number uh, is going to end up being about 31 million. So a lot of money and a lot of um, uh, a lot of financial commitment for that. Now to let somebody go at 31 million of a dead cap and not have a body uh, to even fill that role I think is uh, illustrative of how badly the Bills wanted to move on from him. I think a lot of people just assumed that they wouldn't because of the financial considerations of it. But they proved today that I think that uh, not just I think, uh, but from my sourcing, uh, they just don't see Stefan Diggs as a number one wide receiver anymore. And they proved it down the home stretch last season. And uh, they feel comfortable moving on from him and uh, the the drama that he creates. Okay, so was this about the level of talent performance or was it about the drama and the fact he was, they were dealing with a diva receiver and they didn't want it anymore? Yeah, it's a combination of both because you can put up with it as long as you're getting the number one wide receiver production. And he started off 2023 like, a mushroom cloud. He was all everything. He was posting numbers like you wouldn't believe. And then about halfway through the season, right about the time his brother in Dallas started tweeting, it's time to get number 14 out of there. Uh, and Stefan Diggs's numbers started to drop. The bills were five and five at the time uh, after losing uh, a game against the Denver Broncos that they should have won. Um, and things looked bleak. Uh, they were two games out of a playoff spot at the time, or I'm sorry, two spots out of the playoff picture. Uh, and it, it looked like it was a season that was going to be lost. And Josh Allen was struggling. They were about to fire Ken Dorsey as their offensive coordinator. They, nobody was on the right page or on the same page, I should say. Uh, and then lo and behold, the bills started to win and they were doing it without Stefan Diggs. His, his production plummeted guys like Khalil Shakir, a second year player uh, running back uh, James Cook, another second year player, rookie tight end Dalton Kincaid. They all started to pick it up. They all started to emerge and Stefan Diggs was playing some weeks, 30% of the offensive snaps. Uh, Trent Sherfield some weeks was playing more snaps than Stefan Diggs. And the Bills finished the season six and one with that. So I think that the Bills got themselves into a place where they could justify um, maybe we don't need this guy and maybe we don't need to pay him um, what we're paying him. We'll eat this cap hit uh, like we have to in, in 2024. Uh, the Bills and the ownership can pocket $18.5 million dollars. And um, we'll, we'll rely on these younger guys. So it was, but I think that if Stefan Diggs were a model teammate, meaning microaggressions aren't there, 
He maybe pushes back whenever his brother wants to mock Buffalo as a market, as a market, take shots at Josh Allen, take shots at getting my big bro out of there. He never did. In fact, if anybody ever asked him about it, he was offended by the question because you're crossing a line. That's family. Uh, and yet Stefan Diggs on occasion would take shots at Josh Allen. There became this, this belief that he was as prone to take a jab at a teammate as he would to defend a teammate. And if you're catching three passes for 30 yards and playing 40% of the snaps on a weekly basis, that becomes a bad, uh, bad algorithm. Yeah. Now, Tim, there's people who have thrown out there that the bills for lack of a better term, iced Stefan Diggs in the second half of the season to kind of show him, you know, dude, you're not that, you're not that significant. You're not that significant. Get over yourself. We're going to show you the offense can function without you being the man. Do you buy any of that? Well, so one of the people who told me that for a story that I wrote was Devin McCourty heading into that game uh, in week 18 against the dolphins. I asked him his thought. Uh, it was a, uh, a Sunday night game. And so he was an analyst, studio, studio analyst for that game. And as a three-time Lombardi Trophy safety uh, in the AFC East, this Uh-oh. Oh. And we lost him, and hopefully he's going to come right back. There he is. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. He he said, <laughs> as a three-time analyst, uh, three-time Lombardi yeah. Trophy, Devin McCourty. This yeah, this is a guy who had to game plan for Stefan Diggs, and now he was looking at it as an analyst. This is a guy who broke down the film. And the best answer he could come up with was that the Bills had deep issues with Stefan Diggs, and they are trying to prove that they can win without him. Now, that was the story that I wrote. There was some pushback on that about how ridiculous it was. Um, but the thing is, is that the Bills would go to Stefan Diggs still. It wasn't as though his... Um, his targets weren't drastically reduced. His playing time was. They tried. They started to run a little bit more, so you could justify there or rationalize, I should say. Um, but in the playoffs, eight minutes left in a game, down three against the Kansas City Chiefs. First down, pinpoint bomb. Justin Reed falls down, and Stephon Diggs drops it. Would have been at least a, if if he if he falls down tackled. Right where he catches it, it's a 55-yard gain. If he stays on his feet, it's a touchdown. Um, that's the same game that started off with first down, first snap of the game, uh, completion to Stephon Diggs, and a fumble. The Bills recovered it. Second play of the game, Stephon Diggs dropped. Uh, they went to him. The production went down. Now, granted, the plays weren't necessarily game-breakers, I apologize to anybody who's trying to watch this and getting seasick by me holding a camera out in my car while I'm visiting my mother for her 80th birthday. But apologies. Normally, I'd be at my laptop. 80th uh, but, birthday? Um, oh, man. Alan Poupard. 80th birthday? Yeah. That's all right. Got to dig, mom, gotta dig me up. Radio, what are you talking about? It's you a talking big about? day. You had to dig yeah. me up. Um, <laughs> so the bill still went to him in key situations. He didn't deliver. And so that also helps their justification of, look, this guy wasn't cutting it. And it's hard to say because here's a guy who helped the Bills go from laughing stock to potentially Super Bowl contender on a yearly basis. They won four straight AFC titles. They've been betting favorites to win the Super Bowl in Las Vegas over the last couple of years, depending on the week. Um, and I think that the Bills, uh, they – it was a business decision, the classic business decision. He's about to turn 31. Well, I don't want to say about to. He'll turn 31 during the season. Um, the Bills insisted he wasn't hurt. He insisted he wasn't hurt. He never appeared on an injury report, which, um, as we know, with gambling, what it is and how diligent or at least That's more diligent the NFL is in maintaining injury reports teams face severe punishments for fibbing like they used to. Um, so but all if right, a player so doesn't not... report, if a player doesn't report an injury to the team, then it doesn't have to be reported to the injury report. But I, I, I hear what you're saying, but yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so there, yeah, there's that part of it. Because we had um, we had that same issue with Tyreek Hill, where literally he was injured, would not address what the injury was, never was on the injury report, but we all knew he was injured. So I, I'm, yeah. I'm still trying to figure out how these players want to skirt it or why they would want to skirt it. Yeah, you're right. Um, it would it would probably do Stefan Diggs and uh, some PR good to admit. Uh, I had an abdominal injury. I had a foot injury, whatever it is, but he never did. He said, I'm full go. The bill said he's full go. Um, he was again, like I said, uh, playing fewer snaps than Trent Sherfield on occasion. Uh, second year player, Khalil Shakir, uh, Gabriel Davis was playing more, uh, than, than Stefan Diggs. And here's your, your number one receiver. And, yeah, it was it was uh, bizarre, and so uh, I don't think he quit on the team. He's known as an ultimate competitor, um, but he, he but hasn't wanted some... to be there for a while. And I, I know this because I know people who are around him here in Miami, and he didn't like it. And he hasn't. Uh, and I don't know what the nature of the relationship was with Josh Allen. We saw him celebrating during the Dolphins win, and they looked like best buddies in that first victory, and then it seemed to go downhill. Did you ever get to what was the truth of the relationship there? Uh, no, and uh, Josh Allen would never talk about it, and Stefan Diggs would never talk about it. You know, the interesting thing, though, uh, my colleague Joe Biscali at The Athletic asked Stefan Diggs towards the end of the season, you know, kind of a, I wouldn't say it's a softball question. It, re it requires some thought, but it should be a layup for somebody who's been in the NFL for so long and is used to being interviewed. How has your relationship with Josh Allen evolved since you've been in Buffalo? And uh, Stefan Diggs pretty much said there, he didn't say there isn't one, but reading between the lines, he didn't answer the question and he could have. And he could have done a lot of things like like we go with the passive aggressive tweets. And there was just one last night. Um, uh, and then we mentioned, you know, Trayvon Diggs and nobody like what's the deal here? Like nobody could really get at it. There was a uh, there was an obvious rift last offseason uh, with uh, Stefan Diggs and the team uh, in which it lasted several months to the point that he showed up to mandatory minicamp and the. Uh, he, he, he was told to go home for the day, uh, because there was a misunderstanding. Sean McDermott said he was very concerned to use his words. There's just always been a lot of weirdness around it. And of course he comes off as transparent in a news conference until he's misunderstood. Um, and people ask him about it. And he That's because you don't speak diva. It. You got to speak yeah. diva. Maybe so. Maybe <laughs> so. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think that he, and again, that was what I wrote today. He wore the bills out. And I think that that was their point. They had a, they had a price point that the Texans were willing to meet finally. And, uh, they knew that they probably couldn't get a second round pick for him at the end of next season because he would be 32, uh, heading into that year, or at least, uh, he would turn 32 in that year. So then I, th I think it just became the bill. The bills were approached by a team and said, we're cutting our losses. Well, let me well, ask you this a question. couple of Dolphin defenders too. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you this question. Um, numbers. Obviously this is Josh Allen without Stefan Diggs in his rookie season, 30 touchdowns, 21 interceptions, 78.2 quarterback rating uh, with Stefan Diggs, 17,000 yards, 135 touchdowns. 57 interceptions, 96.9 .9 quarterback rating. How much of, Steph, of of Josh Allen's development do you credit do you credit Stephon Diggs for, or do you think that it would happen despite him? No, I don't think no. The, this is not. You can't re just replace Stephon Diggs like he's. Uh, it, you, it's not going to take one player, but I think that the production is going to fill the vacuum whether it comes from Khalil Shakir, Curtis Samuel, who they've signed, um, you know, Dalton Kincaid, the rookie tight end, he'll be entering his second year, whatever they do in the draft, whatever they may do here in free agency between here and the season beginning. Um, sleep on Matt Collins. We both love Matt Collins. Yeah, right. Do. And I'll tell you what, the bills love him too. 
He's a guy who's been a captain for multiple teams. They went out and got this guy for a reason. Um, now, oh. does he fill the production part? Probably not, but he is a guy, he's a leader. He's going to play special teams. He'll do the dirty work. He'll do all the things that sets the tone that your younger players are going to learn from all that stuff. Um, glue guy. Um, but, you know, Omar, to answer your question, who made who? I think they made each other. I mean, Stefan Diggs was not a bona fide superstar in Minnesota. You could see it. You could see it. And obviously he had his reasons for leaving and probably justified because they wanted to run and he thought he could be a superstar, but he came to Buffalo and became that superstar. And Josh Allen helped him with that. I mean, having Josh Allen throw you the ball instead of Kirk cousins, a little bit different. Um, and I think that Josh Allen learned what you need to do or what to demand from your receivers. Meaning he set the example of what Josh Allen is going to say, Hey, look, this is the way we did it when Steph was at his peak and, and all that stuff. But as Stefan Diggs became, you hate to say it, but over the second half of the season, just a guy, <gasps> statistically speaking, statistically speaking, just a guy, again, you're playing. Yeah. When you're playing fewer snaps than Trent Shurfield, you're just a guy. Oh, but Trent Shurfield's still unemployed. Former Dolphin. No, he signed with somebody. We like well, that's what I'm saying. And you're still getting fewer snaps in that guy while the Bills keep winning. That's the Bills saying, well, we can easily replace this. Um, and uh, Josh Allen, meanwhile, played his best football when Stephon Diggs wasn't producing. Josh mm -hmm. Allen throwing for as many or running for as many touchdowns as he's throwing. Um, the guy was a, a machine. And I think that if you're going to have an argument, which some people could could have, uh, I was a Lamar Jackson guy for the MVP vote. He got my MVP vote for the PFWA award anyway. Uh, but a lot, there were some people who said Josh Allen deserved it. Um, you're doing it based on the second half of the season, not the first half when Stefan Diggs was going off. Um, Josh Allen carried the team on his back. And so who made who? All right. Maybe Stefan Diggs got Josh Allen to a point. But I think Josh Allen is going to continue to be closer to the player he's been without Stephon Diggs than Stephon Diggs is going to be without Josh Allen. And okay. that's not necessarily the player. I think it's where they are in their career arcs more than anything else. Although he's going to a team with a good quarterback, too, with C.J. Stroud. He is. It's going to be exciting. And here's the thing, too. You know, there was a funny tweet, another, uh, you could say, you know, the passive-aggressive tweet, you know, Stephon Diggs has been good at him. Uh, somebody was putting together like an all-star team and had Stefan Diggs as wide receiver three. And he tweeted back. This was within the last, it might've been yesterday, in fact, or the day before said wide receiver three, you know, like how ridiculous is that? Uh, because Stefan Diggs is always looking for people to rally uh, to his a either defense or his praise. And uh, in Houston, he might be wide receiver three <laughs> because they're good. They are good. Good. And Very so good. he's going to have success. And so, yeah. And I think that that's probably a consideration of the bills. They're probably grimacing a little bit, knowing that you don't get to realize the, 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 uh, what you get back for Stefan Diggs until maybe 2025, if they hold on to that pick, maybe they spin it into something else here at this draft, but if they hold on to that pick, you're not going to see it for a while. Meanwhile, Stefan Diggs could have another thousand yard, seven touchdown season in Houston and on the surface, people are going to look at it and say, see, we, we screwed up. We screwed up. We should have held on to that guy. But clearly the Bills weighed all of the things involved and came to a, a, a conclusion where they're comfortable uh, to not only move on from Stefan Diggs, but the things that go along with it. The, you know, the fact that they're eating the hit, the cap hit, the dead cap hit. Uh, they're only taking a 2025 second round pick while also giving up two late round picks. I mean, there's a lot of things that make it look like the Bills were like, we couldn't wait to move on. You guys throw us something, and we're going to give you Stephon Diggs and this big contract. Get it off our hands, please. Uh, the, there's there's like, some distraction here is what it is. You don't feel like this, Tim, could be a soft reset for the Bills? Because, I mean, Mitch Morse, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, um, the, the linebackers. Tredavious White. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're dealing with a lot of guys who are injury – I don't want to say injury prone, but guys who are it, it faded 
um, ragged uh, and from because they're warriors. And, and this goes to their character. These are why these guys were captains who helped turn this team around. The cold, these are culture guys for the Bills. All those guys you named. Um, and Sean McDermott was damn near crying at the idea of losing these guys. But Tredavious White is coming off a restructured ACL and now more, more recently a uh, blown out ACL. Mitch Morse, uh, aging offensive lineman with a concussion history. Uh, Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer, great safeties who played seven years together. Both ca- All these guys are captains, by the way. Um, oh, we lost Tim again. Uh, we, we definitely need to ask Tim about – uh, well, Jordan yeah. Poyer and Saran Neal. Saran Neal, up oh, there a year ago. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jordan Poyer, you know, neck injuries, neck surgeries. I mean, these are serious injuries. And so when you're up against the salary cap like the Bills are, you're about to pay your franchise quarterback, and you can criticize Brandon Bean for maybe having a bad offseason when he extended digs and when he signed Von Miller to a contract that now doesn't look nearly as sexy as it did when they signed him. Um, you're talking about, uh, you know, you think about, hell, unfortunately, you've all been through it. Uh, the company comes in and says, hey, we got to trim 7% from every department. Well, hell, my department's the best one. I don't care. Everybody's got to take a bite of the, can I curse? The, uh, the poop sandwich. Uh, everybody's got to do it. Well, sorry, Mitch Morris, you're coming back on the most stable offensive line in the NFL. They started all 17 games together in their right positions. They're all under contract at the end of the season. You're looking at that and saying, boy, that's the biggest strength of the bills. Well, they got rid of one of their key backups and they cut their center. So it, that is a, that's, that's a, that's a byproduct of everybody's got to suffer a little bit. And so all of those guys that you mentioned, I think you can look at it and say, I get it. Um, Mitch Morris was jarring, um, again, because of that stability. But then you stop and think about it and say, well, if it had to happen, it does make sense. Um, they have a replacement for him in uh, Connor McGovern, who has uh, – he's they believe he's a natural center who just hasn't played the position yet. He played it at Penn State, was recruited as one of the top centers uh, in the country uh, out of high school, all that stuff. So, obviously, with any team. There's a little bit of gambling. There's a little bit of we got to calculate here. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, soft reset, I think I think you can ma- – yeah, I, that's not a phrase that you can – You, I would ever say doesn't – isn't true. But I think it's, it's mostly because you have those contracts that a good team has to deal. When you're good, this is the type of stuff you have to go through. Mm-hmm. Uh how how excited or not should Dolphin fans be about adding Jordan Poyer to the secondary based on what he showed last year? I love Jordan Poyer. Um, I love him as a leader. He is, I think, more that than performer at this point. Take a look at the game-changing plays. Here's a guy who is prone over his – well, I don't want to say over his career. He did it a little bit in Cleveland – but really came into his own with Sean McDermott uh, in well, playing alongside Micah Hyde. Um, force fumbles, the occasional sack, interceptions. The guy played in Kansas City two seasons ago on a collapse, partially collapsed lung, or I should say a healing collapsed lung. He couldn't fly with the team to Arrowhead Stadium because of the air pressure in the plane. So the team gives him a sprinter van, and he and his wife and kid – or kids, plural, I don't know, drive from Buffalo to Kansas City so this guy could play. And the and he played he played in the entire game. The Bills won. He broke up a pass late in the game. This guy is balls personified. So I don't ever want to say that the, the Dolphins aren't getting a player. But I think that you can take a look at the contract that he signed and say, all right, you're, you're going on, you're going on balls. You're paying for this man's balls. <laughs> and you're going to get them. You're going to get them uh, because this guy's they got big ones. Um, but it, it catches up with you. And, and uh, while the and time is undefeated, 
he's got he's and he plays the game so hard that you name the injury this guy's had it uh so fans should love him now they might live if you're looking at him as the answer probably getting your hopes up too much however if you take him for what he is he could go down as just a hero i mean just one of the great dudes who's going to rub off on everybody else, who's going to teach people. There will be people, this is my guess, let's say Jordan Poyer plays one year and one year only, and then he retires. Maybe he was trying to make a point to Buffalo that he wanted to go one more year, just like Thurman Thomas did uh, back in uh, 2001. And then uh, working and he was, Right. Um, let's say he plays one year and that's it. You're probably still going to be here in five years from now. About the impact what I that. learned from what I learned from Jordan Poyer from guys on the team. And by the way, I, I want to say, and Omar, you can disagree with me if you want. I think we may have a new leader for best quote ever on the podcast. You're paying for this <laughs> man's balls. I, I yeah. was, that was that, awesome. that's the type of player He's got that big I, ones. Yeah, that's the type of player that I like. I, I like. I've watched him train down here. He's a dog, and uh, you you could you could always tell dogs they 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 bark and. That's the one thing I noticed about Buffalo. They weren't scared to add dogs to the team. Now the question is, now that they banished a lot of those dogs, will they still have a bite? How competitive do you think that the Bills will be? Are they still the reigning AFC East champs and the division comes through them? Whew. I think so. I do think so. And I hate to be simplistic about it, but I think it comes down to the quarterback. I think Josh Allen – over time, it, look, I know that I'm loading up a little bit too much, but as a guy who watches him play, and, and I've seen a lot of uh, – I've covered it, this guy is a Hall of Fame-type player. Now, you, sometimes you need Super Bowls to make it into the Hall of Fame, or maybe the way you win your Halls of Fame or your Super Bowls, you know, Eli Manning, just because you won two doesn't mean you're going to get in. Jim Plunkett, just because you won two doesn't mean you're going to get in. Uh, but then there are some guys who are like, if they'd won that Super Bowl, they'd be in. Um, maybe he goes down as one of those dudes, but he's breaking records. When you talk about the running and passing combination, this guy is setting NFL records almost every year. Uh, and he is otherworldly. He's something to watch. You know, he is, you know, he's bigger than Larry Zonka. He's mm -hmm. bigger than John Riggins. He's bigger I, I can't I, I'm kicking myself because I wrote a story in which I use these examples and I didn't use this guy. He's bigger than Earl Campbell. And he plays quarterback. Mm -hmm. This guy, I don't think people necessarily realize it. Um, now, granted, Earl Campbell could play on a week to week basis if he had a sprained wrist. Uh, Josh Allen cannot uh, if there's a shoulder injury, you know, so you can't just go out there and say, well, hell, run it, dude. Uh, there's that, yeah. but and he's do you want him running? Talent. Do you want yeah. him running it? Because I think you he's... sure do. The team's you better do? when he does it. The team's better when he does it. The team knows they're better when he does it. Shorter they're lifespan. To protect him. Shorter lifespan. True, you're right. Cam Newton. But I think that the Bills have learned. I think they learned last year, especially with the way they started slow. I think they'd rather take. This is me talking. I'm I'm projecting here. Um, I think the Bills would rather take five years, let's or four years of Josh Allen like that than 10 years of trying to make Josh Allen a pocket passer. Because mm -hmm. I think your shot of being special uh, and winning Super Bowls, you know, if you want to drag it out and whatever, I don't know. But um, he's that good. And he his game totally changes when he's allowed to run. Um, and I just don't see... I don't think any of the other quarterbacks in the league touch him. I know Tua has his strengths. I know Tua has his gifts. Aaron Rodgers, you know, I, I don't want him to go away because I think he makes the league fun. Uh, but come on. Um, look, I think it's, it's again, it comes at, like a, it, we're, sim we're being simplistic about it, and it's the quarterback. And as long as Josh Allen's the quarterback of the Bills and not hurt, um, they're going to be the team to beat. Yeah, definitely. Can't, can't argue. Can't argue with that. I mean, dude can play. Well, Tim, we appreciate your time. Go enjoy uh, mom's 80th birthday. 
Omar, yeah, thank you. I don't think it's today. It's not today specifically, is it, Tim? It's tomorrow. Okay. Oh. okay. It's See, tomorrow. Now, now it's so we got all kinds of things going on. We got siblings and schedules to meet. So, um, yeah, we're uh, we're I'm, I'm out. Uh, I'm enjoying uh, the siblings. Uh, mom, uh, Mom's Day's uh, Saturday, actually. So we're going to be here for a little bit. Okay, right. nice. We appreciate okay. you giving us some time, Tim. Very, very kind of you. Thank you. No, thank, thank you, you guys. Thank you. Sorry right. for the disconnects. That's all good. You, you're That's class. Good. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care. Thanks, Tim.